Hello, everyone. So the purpose of today's video and transmission is to answer certain questions, not only through the verbal transmission, but also um, through the transmission, which will create shifts in your lives. Most of you are going through a period of challenges and the period of some kind of emotional um, or some type of karmic transformation where you are faced with a lot of unwanted circumstances, be it with your family, be it financially, be it uh, at your work. Maybe you are unsure about where you want to go, what you want to do, uh, what your life is all about. And the purpose of this transmission is to actually balance and align your energy. Again, the transmission doesn't mean that this is some kind of an offered crutch. The transmission means that you are refocused within. Most of our challenges and problems arise from our externalized perception. We always externalize ourselves. We also perceive a lot of points in life, be it um, progress, love, relationships, uh, courage, in a kind of a distorted way. And because of this perception, we uh, distort our lives. We experience so-called uh, negative uh, you know, circumstances, and we uh, interact with people from this kind of a negative self-expression. Uh, what I mean by that is that when we interact with others, we have or we keep uh, at the background some kind of a negative, distorted perception of ourselves uh, and others. And um, the focus of that is uh, our distorted self. From that standpoint, we always think what people think of us how this is going to benefit me. So we never are in that selfless um, kind of a more emanating way. We're rather more in a, in a sense of what do I get? How much energy I suck? Even though if we don't think about it, we uh, manifest that way. And so our energy repels any positive change because the primary focus is complaints. The primary focus is what is not working. The primary focus is uh, I'm not getting attention. I'm not getting that what I want. And so in order to shift anything in our lives, we need to focus within and be inside the body. Most of our or most of the time in our lives, we are externalized. We empower everything else outside of ourselves. And then some, some aspects of this reality reflected back to us and we feel, oh, it benefits me. And certain things just absorb this energy and don't give anything and we feel disappointed. So in order to feel um, fulfilled, we need to realize that the only being who is accountable is your own consciousness and the way it distributes or balances out energy. So the other point is that you are never in control of how circumstances play out or how people act or what their choices in life are. And so when you realize that, it kind of helps you to withdraw that energy into your space of body and remain there. And the more you remain there, the less the external circumstances of people can actually affect your, uh, your way of being or the way you project yourself. And the more powerful you become. And this power is not it it can't be measured by what you're experiencing outside of you it's about 
how courageous you are uh, or you become facing any type of fluctuations in life. And the same would apply to spiritual mastery. Whatever you absorb from the outside, if you're able to transmute it, and by transmutation, we mean that you absorb the essential and you are able to filter out and let go of the residue. The more you let go of the residue, the more you are able to stay in your power. To stay in your power means you're concealed, your energy is undisturbed. That's why you're not losing the power or the energy or the time means you become timeless because time and energy is one and the same thing. The more energy you lose, the more you appear as transitory. And it applies also to the factor of, you know, aging, which is none other than loss of energy. And so if you want to heal yourselves, if you wish to uh, restore balance in your life, in any aspect of your life, you need to learn to withdraw and internalize your power, not just by dissociating, not by denying, not by avoiding, but by facing, transmuting, filtering out, letting go, and remaining in your power. And this is the key aspect in spiritual transformation. Because let's say you are awakened to the natural being, you've tasted that, you know. But at the same time, you are not going to, okay, that's that's fine, but you're not moving anywhere further. You're not transforming. You are still losing your energy. You're still wasting your time uh, on people and circumstances that have no benefit to you. You are still uh, pursuing negative transmissions of the past, of your ancestors. You're still um, resolving ancestral traumas, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So in order to be successful, so to speak, in terms of human understanding of life, in the process of spiritual transformation and alchemy, you have to learn to elevate yourself in consciousness so that you can look at everything in a different way, understanding and categorizing everything into draining and cultivating or transitory and potent. The transitory will always drain you. Something that is potent, which is only you, will cultivate you, will sustain you and you it doesn't mean again that you have to lose anything outside of yourself you need to lose people or circumstances situations or relationships no it doesn't mean that it means that you learn to establish proper energetic connection interaction and balance in your interaction with other people so you find the right key to everyone energetically you understand how much to give to this person from the standpoint of how much they're able to absorb so that the relationship is a perfect dance so that you can dance with them and you can uh, benefit uh, in a mutual way in a balanced way as you do so you're experiencing uh, so to say positive results if you um, do the same with your work. You concentrate for some hours, you do your best, you really are creative and enthusiastic and you give it only that amount of time. Even if it's a short period of time, it will bring you benefit, it will bring you success. Spiritual transformation doesn't require some kind of dogmatic, fanatical approach where you, uh, you know, withdraw from life or live some kind of a extreme lifestyle 
or pursue extreme lifestyles. For example, you renounce the world in an external way, meaning you're not uh, leaving your family or you're not doing anything external because that is a complete um, imbalanced way of life, which doesn't bring any spiritual evolution, nor it brings any understanding. Definitely periods of solitude and periods of contemplation are necessary in anyone's life, but it doesn't mean that we have to destroy our life uh, or any kind of current circumstance in order to gain something spiritually. That's an absurd, and that's the result and the residue of the corrupt spirituality of the past six, 7,000 years. Now, it didn't bring us anywhere except for more dogma, more control, and more ignorance. Now, in order to be, to understand true spirituality, natural spirituality, we need to embrace life and understand that everything in our life is an emanation of us at every, at every given time. And so when we realize that we learn to experience joy, bliss, regardless of whom we interact with, how we interact, but we also learn to master this life through ourselves, through our wisdom, through our compassion, where we learn to uh, balance give and take, to balance the amount of time and energy we give to anything or anyone. And this ability makes us truly successful, makes us truly uh, evolved in terms of this life and beyond. So if we cannot uh, understand the, let's say, the idea of balance of energy and time within ourselves, no, we can apply it uh, in our personal life lives, um, then we won't experience any spiritual progress. Um, if there is an imbalance in our lives, let's say, a certain type of imbalance. We are constantly failing in a certain area of life. That area of life is the one that will help us to elevate spiritually. And to elevate spiritually means you learn to balance something within you to release certain excess of energy or lack of energy in a particular area within your own being that eventually will heal that area. That eventually, to heal means balance. To, to be balanced, that is health. Um, to be ageless means mastery over energy and time via cultivation, self-cultivation, preservation of energy. And so when you shift your perspective within and operate and interact with everything outside of you from that internalized perception of I am balanced, not I am as a ego, no, not I am as I need to, to take whatever I can from this world, but I am just in my power, an emanation of being. And that emanation is reflected to me in all possible ways. If I'm balanced, everything I have is balanced. If I'm abundance, everything I have is abundance. And this emanation will repel certain energies and will attract other type of energies. And when you're going through transformation and when you're repelling certain frequencies and certain aspects of life are crumbling, do not look at it as a permanent situation. Do not lose yourself to this permanent uh, to this idea of crisis being permanent. Embrace it as the best situation for you to assess your mastery, to understand whether you are actually truly courageous to transform life. And you know the the understanding of courage is not our human man-made understanding of courage when you, have this moment of courage to fight or to stand your ground or to be in your ego. That is not courage. Courage is the ultimate power to let go. 
courage is ultimate power to embrace love as a higher frequency within yourself and offer it to others selflessly. That is a different understanding of courage. And we come to this realization only after a long process of self-refinement and transformation. A lot of aspects of our lives are misinterpreted by us. We think that we are cursed, we're unfortunate, we're diseased, and we just perpetually reinforce these ideas instead of embracing life circumstances, no matter what they are or could be, in a just that joyful manner. And it, it's much easier said than done, but it is possible. And the courage that we need to exercise is when we face the circumstances, because the courage is the only quality that allows us, no matter what's going on, to continue pursuing life from the capital L. So we pursue life. The moment we're stuck, we're pursuing death. That's why we start aging, losing our life force, uh, our metabolic power declines, and we are not able to digest, so to say, life. And so our health declines, our digestive system starts malfunctioning, and so on and so forth. So whenever you are faced with difficult situation, ask, ask yourself, do I choose life or I choose death? And death means that I choose to, project, to pursue projection. I choose to pursue that which is going to drain my energy, which is transitory, and is going to suck me dry. It is but inevitable to pursue such aspects of life one way or the other temporarily. But if you're stuck there permanently, if you're stuck in the past, if you're stuck in some past circumstance situations and you cannot come out and you do not wish to see your own doing, you're, you, you're, you refuse to take accountability. You're forever stuck in it. To take accountability means to learn to admit, to become responsible and head towards letting go. If that is not taking place, you're forever stuck. You can acquire new ideas, new concepts to justify your life and your misery, but the end result is one and the same, which is death. And death in this sense is loss of energy and short span of life. What drains us is not just what we do or what we eat or whom we interact with, but also our concepts, our dogmas, our uh, spiritual pursuits, you know, the spiritual pursuits that take us outside of ourselves, our philosophies, our belief systems, our ideologies, our rituals, our whatever we believe in. And unfortunately, the majority of people will continue aging and losing their energy simply because of that. And even if they neutralized all the aspects through which they were losing their energy, say they moved out of their family or they are no longer worried about certain aspects of their relationship and so on and so forth, there'll be other aspects which are much subtler. That's what transformation means that you are able to look at any aspect of life, meaning any subtlety of your existence with one and the same attitude. And in that case, you are enjoying every aspect of your life. But from that completeness, from that wholesomeness, from that standpoint of I'm complete. And the completeness is that state of abundance because abundance doesn't mean that we are in the only abundant in a man-made reality with some cash or paper or wealth. Abundance is a state of being where you feel absolutely fulfilled. This bliss, this state of 
equanimity is the state of abundance, the state of nothing to worry about. And again, you're not in control of negative forces of other people's transmissions towards you. But the more you are established in the state of abundance, the more you're able to repel or even absorb this negative energy and grow through it. Because one way is to repel. It's one stage of evolution. The other stage of evolution, or you may say alchemy, is the ability to absorb and grow stronger and stronger because you don't differentiate between negative or positive anymore. You just absorb energy whichever way it comes and can transmute, filter it out and absorb what's necessary for sustenance and reject what's not important. So if we understand this, we can realize that at any point of time, we are already protected, that whatever happens to us is happening because we are on this path, because we are on the path of freeing ourselves throughout this life, because we are already free as consciousness, as a soul. So it's not the matter of what happens after it's a matter of what is going on now and how long you can sustain yourself here now voluntarily so that because if you can't sustain yourself voluntarily meaning you do not have longevity you will be losing life and will be leaving this body kind of by force, by the force of time, meaning your energy will be drained prematurely and you won't learn, you won't understand the purpose of this existence here and learning, and you will continuously be in pain. And the pain means the perpetual loss of energy. So you'll be in that perpetual loss of energy throughout life, which will mean that the quality of life will not be there and the focus will be how to compensate that loss how to enjoy and so you will go more and more into that cycle of codependence on the projected reality in order to enjoy when you missed out on the most vital point which is your own higher being that is the inexhaustible source of enjoyment and knowledge and energy, aka time. And so when you shift your perspective within, you can enjoy anything without loss of energy, without experiencing pains or suffering. You don't need to hide away from life because life is you. Every second, every moment, every breath, you either choose life or you choose death. If you stay within, you choose life. If you project, you choose death. But temporary, temporarily, you can project yourself as long as you can always replenish and you know how to do that. It's actually very easy. It's just that it's not written in the books. And even if it's written through metaphors, symbols, and allegories, not everyone can read it and understand it because the basic, the fundamental experience of unity within yoga, awakening is not there. So yoga is not the twist of the body or what you eat or don't eat. It's the alignment with a higher being, even for a moment, when you experience such a profound understanding of life, beyond words that shifts you but awakening alone is not enough to come to the point of longevity or to realize the essence of life to realize the essence of life we need to undergo years and years 
of letting go and the more we grow in wisdom the easier it becomes to let go so wisdom in itself could be seen as the ability or courage to let go and if you're not able to let go you're not wise if you excuse yourself and hold on to the projection you will be losing in life losing means wasting energy because we are taught to look at life from the standpoint of gains material gains or even some kind of gains of transitory knowledge but these are not gains these are still losses the only true gain is when you are able to cultivate life within and remain this life at any given point. Then you start emanating life. When you're rotting alive, you're emanating death. When you're toxic emotionally, even being in silence without saying anything, people will repel you because you're toxic. You might be pretending you're so spiritual, so enlightened, but you will only attract toxic people who vibrate with you on the same level. You may sometimes attract people who are somewhat aware of the higher being, but if they make wrong choices, wrong meaning towards death, they will not be able to sustain the frequency of the soul and will plunge down to the frequency of their limitations so don't be fooled you may attract people who could be your soulmates who could be your like-minded people but if they continue choosing different type of frequency even though they have that frequency within them in potentiality they will not pursue it that's why it is a choice life is a choice and death is a choice too and if you realize what true life is, it's a high frequency, it's peace, it's bliss. And what death is, it's a loss of energy, even to joy, external joy. You can enjoy as long as you enjoy it from that standpoint of your essence where you don't lose energy. If you empower anything outside of yourself, you are losing your energy behind the scenes. For example, you do spiritual worship to just have that energy come back to you, being blinded actually, in essence, that you are all of these energies. People go into tantric worship, would worship, any kind of worship, appealing to certain entities, deities, not realizing, not having discovered that energy within them. Consciousness, you see, we looked at everything within our consciousness and created concepts. We say, okay, consciousness divides itself into five elements. In a different tradition, it divides itself into 10 types of knowledge or energies. So we have all these concepts, right? But after all, it's all consciousness. So that consciousness can fragment itself and can stay in a unified way. It is a choice. Every time you fragment or pursue a particular fragment, you may maybe gain something, but that gain is still loss. You're excited. Oh, I worship, now I got something. Oh, you got an extra headache, an extra responsibility through which you will still be blindly losing yourselves.
it's a very different teaching. It's a higher teaching, the teaching which doesn't need to be tagged. But once anyone who is listening gains this realization, you don't need pursue to pursue anything. All you need to pursue is that which you identified as life through yoga, through the awakening, meaning you've experienced the absorbed natural meditative state. Then you don't need to ask what meditation is. You don't need to ask what Kundalini awakening is. You don't need to go into all this entertaining spiritual talks, how to sublimate, how to activate your pineal gland, how to be this, how to be that. Because you are. You are, and you can be anything, but you don't need to divide. You don't need to stay in the dif un like differentiated way. You can be in undifferentiated way. You're still moving around through your body, using it wisely, and preserving it wisely as well. So after all, life is about priorities. Life is about values. And if that value is outside, it will always be lost one way or the other. If you never lose the awareness of life and its essence within you, then it means that you preserve your value within. So, The highest of all transmissions is that which is unintentional. The more intention you put into anything, the more limited the result. The less intention you put into anything and the more you cultivate life within the more potent and powerful your emanation becomes. Your soul is fully integrated in the body and your body is fully occupied by your own consciousness. Not the distortions, not the limitations, not other people's shadows or impositions. And the less you can be controlled, the less you're controlled, the more free you are, the freer you are in this life and beyond this life, you realize that nothing holds you. And this is the freedom that most of the rare yogis and siddhas realize. They didn't realize anything outside or anything like supernatural necessarily, because this very point is not supernatural, it's just the very natural aspect of life, the inner freedom, the deep awareness of that freedom, whether through this state or any other state of existence, you've never been bound, you don't owe anybody anything, but you live consciously, generously, abundantly. naturally, morally, and in a bound state. And that's the goal for the humanity in the coming or upcoming several thousands of years to restore that, to the, restore that natural awareness beyond dogmas, beyond projections, beyond transitory values, and corruption, perversion of this current age. We all long for it. It's just at this point of time, we are still swimming in distortions and veiled by them. And even though on the soul level, we start awakening and kind of resonating, it's difficult to cultivate the frequency because of these distortions because of the overwhelm that we are faced with. But the more we surrender with courage, again, courage means surrender into life. The more we surrender into life at every given point, 
the more we establish ourselves beyond distortions and the more we <clears throat> cultivate this inexhaustible connection that we've restored through the awakening with the higher being. And the more we open ourselves to the possibility of longevity, health, which is balance, and inner freedom beyond everything that we've learned so far, everything that we've cultivated so far or practiced. Any action, be it relationship with someone, cooking, cleaning, learning, teaching, ritual, ritualistic worship, or anything, this is still an external action. And what matters here is through which awareness you perform these actions. How much you give into it. And how much you realize that it's still coming from you. If you don't have the awareness that everything is your projection, you're still at loss. But people do speak about it here and there. The point is not speaking, the point is realization. The point is awareness of how to alchemize and preserve time and energy, which is one the same thing, right? The more you look at life in a divided, fragmented way, I need to preserve my breath, I need to retain this, I need to twist my body this way or that way, I need to activate my pineal gland. You don't look at yourself as a whole. And to restore that perception means to gain high awareness, to observe yourself as a whole, not as a, an aspect. It's my nose, it's my eye. Go beyond the form. And you can only go beyond the form in this inner perception when there is real activation. If there is no real activation, you will, you will never be able to relate to what is conveyed here. And what is conveyed is beyond words. This was, which is conveyed is the moment of awakening. And to have a moment of awakening, you don't need to look at 20 minutes of transmissions, five minutes of, again, this is all differentiation. You have consumer-like attitude, light body, kundalini awakening, third eye activation, one and the same thing, samadhi. It's one and the same. You're either yoga or not. You're either absorbed or not. But even that doesn't mean absolutely anything. Because what matters is energy. Are you able to preserve it or you're losing it? It doesn't matter whether you are in a state of yoga now for five minutes, absorption for five minutes. Are you able to integrate yourself through life with life and be there at any time, at any point? be able to have this wider range of frequency within you, being able to be flexible. The more you're flexible, the higher your awareness is. You're able to be there and to be there at any point, but your awareness is unhindered. 
undisturbed. We don't need to force anything or be anything because you already are life. If you look at concepts, people will delude you today. They will tell you they will activate this. Tomorrow they will activate that. And you'll be gliding along the surface. It's one and the same thing. True spirituality is natural and simple. You either that or not. You either life or not. That's all. If you know this, you will free yourselves from pursuing false paths, dead ends, and projections. Thank you for your time and hopefully it helps someone to shift their narratives and focus towards life, awaken them towards life, towards the essence of life. The task is now to cultivate it, to realize your value as life, because as life, we are all the same. Life, creation. On transitory aspects, we're different, but in life, we're the same. Any blessings to everyone.